balcony, river, crumb, coffee, miracle. She could smell coffee beans even before the SS blow plate. The Norwegian freighter she boarded in New York in November 1951 landed at the Brazilian port of Santos. There had been open air coffee stands on street corners in Key West, releasing the pungent aroma of brewed coffee to drift on warm sea breezes. But this was different. The acrid scent of roasting beans that greeted her as she descended from the bow plate's upper deck amid dozens of cargo ships loaded for export with the odorless fresh beans still green. She would later say, you could smell coffee everywhere in Brazil, either roasting in factories outside cities and towns or the subtler fragrance of coffee plants in flower on the mountainsides she grew to love as she did the rich, dark liquid that ushered in each day, not in gallons, but in tiny cupfuls, cafezinhos. Thank you so much for joining me this morning on Last for Words. I am Sarah Woods, and we are exploring the lovely poet, Miss Elizabeth Bishop. She's an American poet, this is a book called A Miracle for Breakfast, and it's written by Megan Marshall. And it's a wonderful book that will light up your imagination about the life of Elizabeth Bishop if you are interested in exploring her. Um, but that was a tiny little blippet from this book um, describing Elizabeth Bishop getting off the ship and stepping into Brazil where the aroma of coffee is everywhere which is very much like this poem that we're going to explore today it is called also like the name of that book it's called a miracle for breakfast and Megan Marshall's book a miracle for breakfast is based off of this poem that we're going to explore today um, throughout this poem, Elizabeth Bishop uses a few words over and over again and uses these words to sort of like build up a feeling of anticipation and longing and sort of like a feeling of like there's some sort of like heavenly feeling to me associated with these words. And Megan Marshall um, names each chapter of her book after one of these repeated words in this poem. So some of these repeated words are words like coffee, crumb, balcony, miracle, and river. Um, and if you just like repeat those words over and over again, it does something really interesting in your spirit coffee crumb balcony miracle sun river balcony river miracle coffee crumb sun it sort of like lights up this warmth in your imagination or it does to me um so i feel like every time i've come to this poem i don't know if i've completely understood the poem but reading the poem, I feel like every time I've come to it, it has lit up some part of me that, um, some part of my imagination that longs for warmth and abundance and richness. Um, and what that might feel like in your soul. Um, but it's funny when I went, I realized I didn't completely understand the poem. I just knew sort of what it made me feel when I read it. So I went and I started exploring different people's takes on this poem and what they thought about this poem. And some people, you know, had things relating this to, um, 
communism. Some people had things relating this to Jesus um, feeding the 5,000. There were other people who were relating it to the Great Depression, um, like the rationing of bread. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, like if you have all that, those are all ideas that could find themselves in this poem, but I'm gonna read it to you. And for now, I just want you to like, not necessarily like go into all those ideas with it, but like just let it like, sort of like come into your soul and light up your imagination and see if you can feel the sun. Can you feel the bread and the crumb? And can you um, smell the coffee? So here we go, let's just start it. it. It's on page 20. It's a miracle for breakfast. And this is the book that I am reading it out of. <clears throat> At six o'clock, we were waiting for coffee, waiting for coffee and the charitable crumb that was going to be served from a certain balcony, like kings of old or like a miracle. It was still dark. One foot of the sun steadied itself on a long ripple in the river. The first ferry of the day had just crossed the river. It was so cold, we hoped that the coffee would be very hot. Seeing that the sun was not going to warm us, and that the crumb would be a loaf each buttered by a miracle. At seven, a man stepped out on the balcony. He stood for a minute, alone on the balcony, looking over our heads towards the river. A servant handed him the makings of a miracle, consisting of one lone cup of coffee, one roll which he proceeded to crumb his head, so to speak, in the clouds, along with the sun. Was the man crazy? What under the sun was he trying to do up there on his balcony? Each man received one rather hard crumb, which some flicked scornfully into the river, and in a cup, one drop of the coffee. Some of us stood around waiting for the miracle. I can tell what I saw next. It was not a miracle. A beautiful villa stood in the sun, and from its doors came the smell of hot coffee. In front, a baroque white plaster balcony added by birds who nest along the river. I saw it with one eye close to the crumb. In galleries and marble chambers, my crumb my mansion made for me by a miracle through ages by insects birds and the river working with stone every day in the sun at breakfast time i sit on my balcony with my feet up and drink gallons of coffee we licked the crumb and swallowed the coffee a window across the river caught the sun as if the miracle were working on the wrong balcony. Could you feel this whole poem? Like, could you feel the coldness of the morning? Could you feel the sun starting to come up behind the river and the people waiting for this miracle? The people waiting for this bread, the people waiting for this coffee. Um, you can feel this like anticipation of warmth and um, like a hunger being satisfied. Um, and to me, there's something about those two feelings that remind me of the idea of heaven. There's something about the idea of heaven where, um, for me, like where you imagine like incredible light and warmth and you imagine not um, being like constantly aware of appetite and hunger, that there's like some form of being like satisfied in heaven and filled, um, which I love. I love those two ideas. Um, but so 
when you start off this poem, it's six o'clock in the morning, they're waiting for coffee, and this charitable crumb that's going to be served from a specific balcony, like kings of old or like a miracle. Um, so it's cold, so we're at this moment, it's cold, and then suddenly there's this man on the balcony um, and he looks over their heads. So you get this feeling that like he's up on the balcony, they're down below and he has bread, maybe they don't. And he's standing up there and a servant brings him a loaf of bread and a cup of coffee. And there's like this feeling that like everyone there is waiting for a full cup of coffee. Everyone there is waiting for a full loaf of bread. But this crazy man, instead, he proceeds to crumb the bread. She's like, is he crazy? What is he trying to do? And so he crumbed his bread and it says, each man received rather than a loaf, a crumb, a crumb of the bread. And like, it's, it, it, you get this idea that it was so little that they just were like disgusted and they just flicked it into the river. They're like, this is like, this is so little that it's can't, it's just gonna tease me. Like there's nothing about this that's gonna fill me up. And so they flick it into the river and into your coffee cup. Can you imagine like waiting for like a full cup of coffee, like hot coffee, and then someone comes along and this miracle that you're waiting for and they pour and it's like a drop and you're like <laughs> you're like ah like I can imagine the like frustration um, of feeling that okay so we have this whole scene right here um, which is interesting some people have compared this little section to like the ideas of communism um, the idea of like taking something and distributing it and they're not really being enough. I feel like that's been kind of common in communism, like this idea of like one person controlling the food, one person controlling the wealth and only when it's time to distribute every, when it's distributed, like the people are getting crumbs, like they're barely getting enough to even work with, you know? Um, some people compared this to the Great Depression. Some people, um, I saw one girl who was writing about this and she compared it to Jesus, which I thought was interesting. Um, but I felt like when I read this, there is something almost religious about it. There is something kind of like Jesus, because there is a story where Jesus, um, he gathers up like a couple loaves of bread and some fish, and there's like thousands of people to feed, and he's like, we're going to feed this, these masses with this little bit of food. Um, but to me, the difference between communism or the experience of the Great Depression is like, in communism, they take what they have. If you have one loaf of bread and you have a thousand people, you're literally gonna have a thousand crumbs from that one loaf of bread. But the thing that's different, and the people are still gonna be hungry. There was something different about the story of Jesus. So I decided to get it out um, That's it's different than this poem. Um, and here, okay, so Jesus feeds the 5,000. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. He was healing people. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? 
He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. Um, okay, so I love, um, I love comparing that to this section of this poem. So this poem like this section of the poem has this like beautiful feeling of anticipation, a beautiful anticipation of a miracle of like waiting to be filled, like this cups of coffee, this bread, the sun rising over the river. And, um, but what ends up happening is there ends up being one loaf and one cup of coffee and it ends up being distributed in crumbs that have no way of filling these people's stomachs or souls. Um, and to me, that's, I like the idea of comparing um, this moment with Jesus where he takes a very little amount and there is something about him where a miracle is involved and then you sort of like if you were to compare that to communism there is something about communism where there is no miracle there if there's a one loaf of bread and there's a thousand people that loaf of bread is going to be split between a thousand people um there is no miracle of multiplication there is no miracle of turning a little into enough for everyone to drink gallons of coffee and eat their fill of bread in the warm sun okay um or this is my this is my comparison um feel free to you know share your thoughts and how you feel about this in the comments if you'd like to um so we have this waiting for a miracle and then this sort of like disappointment. Um, but next we have sort of like this turn in the poem. And this is the part I didn't really understand what was happening. But I feel like I read or listened to a couple people, couple people talk about this being something that happens in Elizabeth Bishop's imagination which I really love because um, like reality can be so bleak and I feel like our imaginations can in spite of poverty in spite of bleakness can create um, such rich places in our mind where there is satisfaction and filling um, so I kind of, I really like the switch in this. Um, so, but what's funny is she says it's not a miracle. She starts this section off saying, what I saw next is not a miracle. But to me, it feels more miraculous than what just happened, you know, um, with this one loaf of bread and this one cup of coffee. I can tell you what I saw next. It was not a miracle. A beautiful villa stood in the sun, 
and from its doors came the smell of hot coffee. In front, a baroque white plaster balcony added by birds who nest along the river. I saw it with one eye close to the crumb and galleries and marble chambers. My crumb, my mansion, made for me by a miracle through ages by insects, birds, and the river working with stone. Every day in the sun at breakfast time, I sit on my balcony with my feet up and I drink gallons of coffee. And then there's another sort of switch. We licked up the crumb and swallowed the coffee. A window across the river caught the sun as if the miracle were working on the wrong balcony. And it's sort of, to me, I don't know if I'm understanding this last little stanza, but to me, there's something that feels sort of um, disappointing about the last stanza. It's like we go from reality to this imagination that Elizabeth Bishop conjures up of drinking gallons of coffee and just being in this beautiful mansion created by the birds and the insects and the river and the sun. And every day she wakes up here in this heavenly place and drinks gallons of coffee um, with her feet up. And so we go from that imagination to this last stanza where she said, we licked up the crumb and swallowed the coffee. A window across the river caught the sun as if the miracle were working on the wrong balcony. To me, that's such a weird way to end this um, poem because there's something about it to me. I guess this stanza sort of makes it feel like she just experienced this miracle in her soul and then all of a sudden the sun comes up and a window across the river catches the sun as if the miracle were working on the wrong balcony. And it feels sort of like she experiences this miracle and then she licks up her little crumb, her little coffee, and then she looks across the river and the miracle is happening on someone else's balcony. It's like a reality check that her imagination, what just happened in her imagination maybe isn't real. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if that is what is happening right there. Um, but I would love to hear anybody who has a thought on that, like what the, like the progression of this poem and what has just happened. Um, but I read somewhere that there's, that this poem um, is sort of like the idea of um, like contrasting the poor and the rich, the feeling of poor and rich and um, the feeling of trying to like create gratefulness for what you have. I don't know if that's really her point. Um, but um, to me, there is, I feel like for me when I read this, there is um, something about this poem that makes me feel like everyone's waiting for a miracle. And for Elizabeth Bishop, it feels like the miracle happened in her imagination. Um, no matter what was actually happening in, it, happening in reality around her, that, um, yeah, it's sort of kind of like, if you only depended on your reality to, 
to show up with miracles like would it show up? Like, would miracles happen? Like, I don't know. But for Elizabeth Bishop, a miracle happened, and it happened in her imagination. Um, I love the idea that a person could only have a drop of coffee in reality, but in their imagination, they're satisfied by gallons of coffee and sunshine and warmth. Um, to me, that is absolutely a beautiful idea um but i will say um at the end of this poem okay i feel like i'm seeing something a little bit different there were all these people that received the crumb and the drop of coffee and she talked about some of the people just that disdain for the nothingness of what they were getting like flicked it into the river um i can i, I can feel that like frustration of being like so hungry and then being like are you kidding me um but when it switches back to reality for elizabeth bishop she it says we licked up the crumb and swallowed the coffee um like she did not flick her crumb into the river she did not um pour out her drop of coffee like she um ate it she licked it up and swallowed it and um, a window across the river caught the sun as if the miracle were working on the wrong balcony. Um, so the miracle did not happen in real life, but she took what she had and she ate it <laughs> and she swallowed it and um, she let her imagination create a miracle for her. Which I really like that. Um, Anyway, we will stop there. Thank you so much for joining me as we explored the lovely Miss Elizabeth Bishop. Um, hope you are having a great week and I will see you again next time.